Hello, and welcome to the Texas Instruments OMAP 3530 and OMAP 3503 Developer Series, Module 1. In this series, we will show you how to set up a development environment for these processors. Let's begin by downloading VMware Workstation from the web. If I open an internet browser and in Google type VMware Workstation and then search, the first page that comes up will be a link to the VMware Workstation product. From here, I can purchase online VMware Workstation. Since I've already done that, I'll just skip this part because it's already installed on my machine. Location to download. To download a DSL distribution, download damn small Linux. First link that comes up takes me to this page. Click the download. Browse to one of the mirrors. I'll take the first one at Georgia Tech. I'm actually in Atlanta. And the current folder has the latest official download of damn small Linux. You can see here in the details, uh, first I'll point out that they actually have a VMX file, a virtual machine set up with damn small Linux already installed on it. Uh, we want to show you the entire process though, just in case you'd like to install a different distribution or for whatever reason. The current ISO is a link to the, the latest ISO. This is actually just a link to this file right here. So I'm going to download DSL 4.2.5. Download that right onto the desktop. Virtual machine and download Linux. Let's begin by opening VMware Workstation. We then go to New Virtual Machine, which brings up the New Virtual Machine wizard. I'll use a custom configuration and a new workstation format. Then select Linux as the guest operating system and other Linux 2.4.x kernel. You'll probably want to research the kernel that you're installing. Version. This in tools. At this point, I can name the virtual machine. Click next. One processor, and set the amount of the host PC's memory that will be allocated to the virtual machine. Now, the network connections are very important. There's three major types bridged, network address translation, and host-only networking. Host-only networking is the simplest and creates a direct virtual connection between your virtual PC and the host PC. It can only be used, however, to communicate between the virtual PC and host PC. Network address translation works much like a router. It's used to share one internet connection between multiple computers in a network. In this case, our virtual PC and our host PC are going to share one network connection. This is very useful for accessing the internet, but you should note that machines outside of the network cannot access machines inside of the network. So when we do debugging on an OMAP board, the OMAP board would not be able to establish an IP connection if we're behind a network address translation firewall. The final type is bridged networking. On a bridged network connection, the host PC and the virtual machine will share a single physical Ethernet connection. They will both be given separate IP addresses on this network and this is the one that we'll be using for debugging purposes. We set up bridge networking and then hit next. Next we need to create a new hard disk drive or a virtual disk 
here I know from experience that the IDE is the setting that will give the best results. So you don't want to use the default of SCSI. Instead, select an IDE virtual disk. Three gigabytes is more than enough for a DSL installation. And we can rename the hard disk drive to OMAP Devel. If we were to, one next thing that we would like to do is add a second virtual network interface card. So we've added one that's bridged that we'll use for debugging our OMAP development board over a lined connection. I'm going to add a second one that uses network address translation that I will connect to my wireless. This will allow me to access the internet and the OMAP board from one virtual machine without changing the settings. I'm also going to remove the audio driver from this virtual machine, which isn't necessary, but we don't need audio. And this will help remove annoying beeps, etc., coming from the virtual machine. Finally, we need to add a serial port, RS-232 type serial port, for deb a debugging terminal to communicate with the OMAP board over a terminal emulation program such as Minicom. On my PC, that would connect to COM1. Finally, we're ready to start the virtual machine. But before we do, we want to connect an ISO image to the CD-ROM. This is going to be the ISO image that we've already downloaded, which is the installation CD for damn small Linux. Once we've connected that ISO, we can hit OK and are now ready to start the virtual machine. There's an error that comes up. It's actually a warning just to say that the bridged interface, which is the, LAN, the cabled interface on my PC, isn't currently active. And this warning just says that the corresponding virtual interface won't be active as well. At this point, we've booted up Linux, but we've booted off of a CD. Keep in mind that we still have not installed the damn small Linux distribution onto this virtual PC. We've simply booted off of a CD. In order to install the distribution, we can use a utility that's called DSL-HD install. This utility needs to be run with root permissions. So we'll use the sudo command, which says that anything following will be run under root permission. It asks which hard drive partition we'd like to install to. There's only one hard drive on this virtual machine, which is indicated by HDA. You should hit yes for each of these questions to accept the defaults. And at this point, it will format the virtual hard drive and begin installing DSL Linux. Once the installation completes, it will ask if you'd like to install a bootloader. Hit yes. It will give you a choice between Grub and Lilo. I'm installing Lilo. And once that process completes, you can hit yes in order to reboot the system. When the system tries to reboot, it won't be able to reboot until the CD is removed from the CD-ROM drive. We do that by hitting Control and Alt simultaneously to get out of the VMware window, then going to VM Settings, and on the CD-ROM, selecting Use Physical Drive. I'm also going to disconnect the drive. This will take off the ISO image that we previously attached. I can enter back into the virtual machine and press Enter to begin rebooting. We'll boot off of Lilo, 